Good morning guys, right now I am just kind of trying to get a pattern drawn out for our dragon pieces. Um, if I timed it right, yesterday's video should have been making these dragon feet. So I already have all the clip pieces done for this dragon, but I have done literally nothing. So I'm going to work on a pattern that way we can actually turn it into a doll. So I'm doing that. I also finished my commission over the weekend, so I need to take photos. Since I'm going to do a video of it, I need to record myself with that real quick. That way I can box it up and get everything done and they don't have to wait because I wanted to do a video of it. So I need to do that, message them, figure out if they like it or not. If so, we're going to do our final payment and get it all boxed up to Day. And then I still have a bunch of work to do on the axolotl dragons, so we might work on getting the feet started. Um, I still have to make like two more faces, but I think I want to work on the feet, that way maybe we can get at least one or two of them done, and then we can work on the other stuff. But yeah, other than that, I'm not sure what else we're doing today. I do know I have a lot to do, I just can't think of it right now. So I'm most of the way done with the pattern, I just need to make the wings. So I forgot the body and the legs, and I'm just not sure if I want to give him really big wings or just kind of more tinier ones, because he's kind of set up very similar to like a baby dragon, so it really depends. Do I want him to look like he needs to grow into his wings, or do I want them to match his size? So, let's see. We want places up here. Because what we could do is go like that. That. and that could be like honestly long enough but yeah like I said this should have been yesterday's video today is Monday for me so I haven't posted it yet technically but I think I wanted to have these uh, posted yesterday that way this vlog kind of made sense time-wise so, yeah it's a little bit of a different video for me I went really long with it for something as simple as making feet but I wanted to give you guys like basically everything kind of slowed down because I wanted to throw out a few more like basic tutorial videos that way um, if I'm doing something and it's just a little too fast you can go to like a specific video on what you want to learn instead of learning the whole doll because I know a lot of you guys, if you are making art dolls, you're not just copying what I'm doing, you're going to design your own and stuff. So, a lot of you are just taking bits and pieces from my tutorials and not doing the whole thing. So, so I figured like these types of videos would be kind of helpful so you don't have to go through all the other content that you've seen before and you could just focus on the one thing that you want. So I did the clay feet ones. I'm trying to think of what other type of tutorials um, would be good for uh, beginner type videos. I mean, I could do some clay head sculpting and different things like that. Um, I know a lot of you guys wanted to see like how I sew patterns into the fabric instead of like painting them onto the fur. I actually will take my pattern and I'll cut it up into a bunch of different pieces and use those to mark out and figure out how to add markings to the body. So this will probably be scaly, but imagine if uh, you wanted stripes on it or something. I usually will draw out on the pattern where I want the stripes, cut the pattern apart, use those pieces to cut out the fabric and different things like that. And I want to come up with a really like complicated design so I can make a whole video on making markings and stuff. So I think that's going to be part of the next one, but if you guys have anything you want to see, let me know. Yeah, the wing's a little, like, short, but I think it looks good for how big the dragon is. I kind of like it. Now hopefully I have enough red fabric for this, so we're going to have to figure out what other colors we're going to add to him. I think this is all my main fabric. I didn't make him that big, so I might have enough. But wings tend to take up a lot of fabric. Okay, I think we're good. I think this is enough fabric for him. 
So yeah, he's going to be all nice and red, and I need to think if I want to add anything else to him. Like, do I want sequins or anything? Do I want any markings? I mean, he does have gold accents, so I could make his belly um, my reversible gold sequins, just to throw in a little bit. Or, um, I do have a gold fake leather scale. That might look better. Yeah, let's do so let's see what this looks like with him. Because one thing we could do is actually cut out the scales on this and glue it onto the other fabric and kind of spread it out. Hmm. I think we'll try and use that. That will look really cool. Okay, warmed up my coffee. I've got everything cut out for the dragon. And since I'm already working on patterns, I figured I would work on like two more. Because, um, what was it? I want to make a fox pattern for my pattern release. And I think that will be the last one I'll add to the pattern release. And then I also wanted to do a really cute small project because I'm kind of behind, honestly, in videos and doing these big projects. So I'm going to try and do a few smaller, more um, easier projects, but still kind of fun and interesting. Because I don't want to just do something small and like, oh, here's a dragon. Kind of like this one. He's just kind of like a basic dragon. But doing the in-depth thing on his feet was a good idea. So a little creature that I've been thinking would be kind of cool to do would be a tadpole. Um, I don't think I've seen a plushy version of a tadpole or anything like that. So it might be mostly plush kind of similar to my octopus and then we'd have the little resin eyes but do I want the eyes to be like this or do I want to find some beads for it or do I want to sculpt them so depending on what I want to do with the eyes that's going to be how large you need to make it so I guess I need to figure that out first <laughs> and then we can go from there by the way these are the eyes that I'm going to use for my lavender axolotl when we make the head for it I really liked how these ones came out so I think this size would probably be best for the tadpoles because then I don't have to make them giant because I want them to be kind of tiny and cute, like maybe this big. Something that I can make a couple cute versions of and put them in my shop because um, I just keep making big things and I need to make some cute little things here and there. If I had glass beads, I could just make really tiny ones, but I think we're going to go for about like that size. So the body shouldn't be that bad. It should be honestly just like a, a circle, which that is definitely too big, but we're just going to figure out the basic layout. And then the tail. And then I can probably use like my lacy kind of transparent fabric to do the like little like fins off of the tail. I think this is going to be a pattern that's going to have two sides and a bottom to kind of keep it more rounded. And I think it would be kind of cute to give it little legs. So I won't do the front, but I think having the back legs would be kind of cute. Now if we did that, the ruffle would extend it, so that's probably a good size. Actually, I kind of round this edge a little bit. I don't want to make his sides too big because since he is kind of rounder, when we make the pattern, he'll look kind of too bulbous. we got to make sure we don't make it too big. See, if I make the feet clay, then it adds a little bit extra complexity to it, which is fine, but if this is going to be like a cute reproduced piece, I need it to be where it can be easily made quite quickly. But also, would the toes be too small to sew? It might be best to make it clay. Okay, so for the tadpole, I decided that toes would probably be best. So I just added like two. I know they have more, but I think at this phase, their toes are still developing. So I decided to just kind of do an underdeveloped foot. And then I got a fox pattern set up. I left it pretty basic. Got the tail, the legs, the main body. I'm trying something a little bit different with the neck. I'm trying to make it a little thicker. That way when I add the clay face, I don't have to have like an extra bit of fabric added to it. I mean, I may still have to, but I'm trying to see if I can get the fabric pattern to work without doing that. Okay, so I just got done walking Axel. I just got in and I am starving. So I have leftover general chicken, but I don't have the rice for it. So I'm gonna make some rice real quick. I love these containers, but I don't love that part of having these containers. I just filled this with rice because I just got fresh rice. <laughs> 
Well, let me clean this up first, and then we can start on rice. I'm not keeping this. It's yuck. Okay, let's try that again. So, while I was outside, it wasn't very foggy, but as we were walking, which I'm only walking like one or two buildings down from the apartments we're at, but you could see the fog rolling in. It got so foggy so fast. It's crazy. I hope this rice will taste good. It's a different kind than I'm used to. I'm kind of picky. Okay. Make sure I got the right burner on. Clean up. So we weren't out very long, I think at most maybe 15, 20 minutes. And within that time, the fog was like barely there to like, I couldn't see the building on the other side of the office building. And my building is on like this side of the office building. <laughs> and it's starting to go away now, but I don't like that it smells very chemically because we live around a lot of oil refining stuff and yeah, I don't know what's in the air right now when it's foggy or smoggy like that and kind of don't like it. We have enough to deal with right now. Don't look in my gross fridge. We definitely need to throw away some leftovers in here. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. I love general chicken and I like making it, but the leftovers are really gross looking because they kind of get a little gelatinous. So I'm trying to not like look at them, but I'm also trying to break them up. For now, and then we'll microwave them. Oh, that looks so good. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> okay, so what I need to work on now is getting the last bit of filming done for the little dragon commission video that I'm going to do and take photos and stuff, of course. So I'm going to get that done real quick. I want to leave it kind of a surprise, plus I need to use this camera for that so you won't see much of it. I think that looks good. Maybe even... Okay, I think I got you all lined up. Okay, I'm gonna start filming. Okay, I'm finally done filming. I think it came out really good. I've got the files uploading right now on the computer so I can edit it together. And now I'm gonna start on some wire frames for the legs for our axolotl dragons. And I got a lot I need to make because we're doing four dragons and that's four legs of dragon, so that's 16 legs in total. <laughs> yeah, that's right. For some reason that doesn't sound like enough. <laughs> But I redrew out a basic guide on what to do, so I have a rough idea of the size that I want. They might not be exactly the same because I can't remember where that guide is. It probably got thrown away. But I know the measurements that I need and I'm just going to get all my wires cut out and we're going to put them together. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the six inches. So these are the middle toes. So I'm going to cut 16 of them. I make them all roughly about the same because I want all the feet to be where I don't really have to worry about them like not matching. That way if I mix them up I can have them go to any dragon. I even have to bend all the wires for the tips of the toes because we're going to have them rounded instead of uh, with claws. So there's a lot to do with these wire frames. To be honest, I actually don't really care for making feet and stuff because of how time-consuming they are. But they're definitely worth it if you can get a good-looking foot. They just are like, oh, I don't want to make this many feet. Why can't I just make snakes all day? I think it's mostly because I'm making the same thing four times for every creature. I can't really make all four of the feet individuals. <laughs> Plus, there's a lot of layers and steps to making the feet. If you guys watched that tutorial that I posted yesterday, you'll see that there's a lot to making feet. You know what? I think after we get these wireframes put together, I think I'll call it good on this and we'll do something else kind of fun. Because I didn't realize that this was going to hurt my hands so much and I still have a lot of bending and stuff to go. So I'm going to get the wireframes done. We'll do the clay pieces later. Um, and then I have one thing that I do want to mess with real quick. Okay, I got all 16 of them done, finally. And I only scratched my hand once, and my fingers are really red right now. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm going to clean all of this up, or at least kind of move it out of the way temporarily, and we're going to work on our last little project for the day. I actually have yet to varnish my Carno painting, so I'm going to pull that off of the wall and we're going to varnish over that. Also, when I cleaned out my closet the other day, I found that I have plastic, so we won't have to use foil to lay down to protect my countertops when we varnish. I've got it folded so the paint that you see is between the two layers, so we're not going to mess up our painting with what's already on here. For a second, I thought I'd already varnished this because I was looking at it and it's all glossy in certain spots, but it's not in other, so clearly I didn't varnish it, but I think what happened is... Um, in the spots that are glossy, I probably used a lot of linseed oil to create some layers. So, like, the background is clearly matte, so we haven't varnished it. For a second I was like, wait, did I varnish this? I don't have a lot of gims all left, so... I'm trying to not use too, too much. Also, I need to make sure to wipe it down so there's no dust on it. Go over it real quick, make sure there's nothing stuck to it. Also, up here, yeah, up here is dusty. We don't want dust up here. So otherwise it just gets stuck in the varnish. It's gonna look so pretty after this. I don't want to use too, too much. You can see all the pretty colors now. I love doing this because you think, oh, the painting looks so good. And then you put the varnish on and you get to see all the colors fresh again. Because this is what it probably looked like when it was still wet. I still want to get a frame for this one, but I don't know when that's going to be. So I'm going to varnish all the way around the edges too, just so it looks nice and cleaned up. Okay guys, I think that's going to be it for today. I had a lot of fun, we got a lot done today, and I'm glad I actually remembered that I needed to varnish this. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.